submarine of the Soviet Union was ready to attack just a few kilometers away from America and the Caribbean Sea. Then the U.S. Navy found out and threw small bombs into the water to bring the submarine up. The Soviet submarine, whose contact with the headquarters was also broken thousands of kilometers away. His captain thought that maybe the war has started, and now it is time to fire the nuclear torpedo missile. This was the time when tensions between the U.S. and the Soviet Union had increased by more than a limit, and thousands of nuclear missiles of both countries were only a button press away. The Soviet submarine captain was about to press the button of the nuclear missile that something happened, suddenly that saved this world from destruction. Welcome to TIT TV. Viewers, this incident occurred during the 12 days of history when the Cold War between America and the Soviet Union was out of control. In World War, the whole world saw the side effects of the nuclear attack on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the dangerous appearance of America. If anyone could hit America's power, it was the Soviet Union. Because immediately after World War, the Soviet Union was the second country to have succeeded in obtaining nuclear technology. They did many nuclear tests and indirectly indicated to the United States that we are not Japan to sit quietly as a result of the attacks. This was the time when the Cold War was going on between the United States and the Soviet Union. Both countries always kept their nuclear weapons ready against each other, whether to attack from land, air, or sea. The world knew very well that if one of the two took part in a nuclear attack, the next country would also respond with a nuclear missile. And as a result, the destruction of Japan would be much more dangerous than the nuclear attacks. So much so that it was believed that maybe 70 of the world's population would watch it. American and Soviet bomber aircrafts were always in the air to make these attacks more effective. Their nuclear submarines also hid from each other in the international waters and waited for just one signal. In addition, the United States also installed its nuclear weapons in Turkey and Italy because these two countries were NATO allies and were also very close to the Soviet Union border. This made America's position stronger because it would be easier to attack the western part of the Soviet Union from here. But when the Soviet Union got the news, they also decided to install their nuclear weapons near America. The best spot for this work was Cuba Island, just 200 chems southeast of America. At that time, Cuba had a pro-communist government that America was not able to control at all. In America's eyes, Cuba was the ally of the Soviet Union because the Soviet Union, because the Soviet Union was actually the core of communism. Communism means that all businesses will be under the control of the government, and everyone will get an equal share of it. That is, classes like rich or poor will not be able to be formed in the society, while America wanted a capitalist system to run all over the world, a kind of free market that does business and generates its own profit. America wanted to attack Cuba on its own and bring a capitalist system there. But Cuban President Fidel Castro got the support of the Soviet Union, which also supplied weapons to Cuba. But in order to make good relations with Cuba, the Soviet Union was thinking something else. At that time, Soviet President Nikita Khrushchev cracked a secret deal with Cuban President Fidel Castro, in which it was decided that the Soviet Union would install its intercontinental ballistic missiles in Cuba, and in return, it would save Cuba from the American attack. But the second advantage of this was that now Soviet nuclear warheads could easily hit the South American region. No one even heard of this deal, and the Soviet Union has started installing its ICMs in various locations in Cuba. But this news had spread throughout the United States in the form of rumors. People were afraid that Soviet nuclear missiles had been installed only 200 chem from Florida. The White House denied all these news and during the 1962 state election campaign, people were convinced that all these news are baseless. But in search of knowing the truth, the U-2 spy plane of the U.S. Air Force was used. The spy plane captured pictures from above Cuba Island, which clearly showed medium range. Range R-12 and intermediate. Range R-14 ballistic missile facilities. 
These photographs were enough to prove that the Soviet Union has surrounded the southeast part of the United States. This news fell on American President John F. Kennedy like lightning, and he decided to do airstrikes on Cuba, on which America was already very angry. The plan was that the airstrikes would first destroy the Soviet ICMs and then Cuba would be captured with full force, which was already due. The American president's plan was actually to invite World War because the attack on the Soviet Union in Cuba will be considered an attack on the Soviet Union. And if this happens, a nuclear war will be waged from both sides, which will not be in anyone's control. On the other hand, when the Soviet Union found out about America's intentions, they shrank their back to respond to the attack. There was also a Soviet B-59 nuclear submarine in this preparation, which was mentioned at the beginning of this video. It was ordered to remain hidden in the depth of the Caribbean Sea near Cuba. The crew of the submarine had full authority that if a war broke out, Moscow would not even need permission to launch a nuclear torpedo missile. This was hidden from the eyes of the U.S. Navy and had gone so deep into the water that their radio contact with Moscow had also broken. At first glance, the U.S. Navy also suspected that the Soviet submarine was in the Caribbean. They threw small bombs in that location and indicated to the submarine to come up and get their identification. The bombs thrown by the U.S. Navy were actually signaling depth charges. This is an anti-submarine weapon that can destroy the entire submarine if it is close to it. The captain of the Soviet B-59, whose contact with Moscow had already broken, thought that the war had started and it was time to fire the nuclear torpedo missile. Although the crew had full authority, but before pressing the nuclear button, the consent of the three officers in the submarine was very important. Two of the three officers were in favor of firing a nuclear torpedo missile, while one officer was not in favor of this attack. Executive Officer Vasily Arkhipov was the second in command of the B-59, but he decided to go against the other two officers. And in the meantime, there was a debate among these three. Arkhipov said that it is very risky to fire a nuclear missile, while he has no confirmation of the start of the war. This debate continued for many minutes, and after that, it was decided to take the B-59 to the surface and first contact Moscow to get an idea of the real situation. At the time of the B-59 submarine incident, the Russian and American presidents had a meeting to neutralize the increasing tension, in which it was decided that the Soviet Union would withdraw its nuclear missiles from Cuba, but on the condition that the United States would not occupy Cuba later. This was a deal that was put in front of the public. But later it turned out that America had secretly agreed that they would also remove their nuclear missiles from Italy and Turkey. The tension that has been going on for 12 days is now known as the Cuban Missile Crisis. For these 12 days, tensions had increased so much that both countries had sent their nuclear missiles to space, which means that if we survive and the war doesn't start, then these missiles will be torn down in space. And if we don't survive, then these missiles will fall directly on their target. But because this crisis was now over, these nuclear missiles were torn down in space. On the other hand, when the B-59 submarine reached the surface of the Caribbean, they contacted Moscow, on which they were ordered to return to the Soviet Union. Historians believe that the executive officer, Vasily Arkhipov, was the person of the world because of whom we are able to live in this world today, because of this historic decision. Otherwise, this nuclear war would have been so severe that perhaps there would not have been a name and a sign of humans in this world. Hey, you've arrived at the end of the video and thank you so much for watching, but don't click off just yet. I do want to take the time to say thank you very much for watching to the end. These things take quite a few sleepless nights to research, script, film, and edit, so you can't imagine how much I really do appreciate your support. If you genuinely enjoyed this video, then don't be shy. Hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure, and comment down below and let me know why. 
My goal with this channel has been to create entertaining documentary style videos on business, finance, and life in general. And if that sounds like something you'd be interested in and you'd want to tune in for more, hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Make sure all your notifications are turned on. But with all of that being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. As per usual, my friend's hand-to-head -head salute from TIT TV.